Good morning, it's Mr. Kalkutsky from Beckman Catholic. It's Wednesday, August 3rd. Has some updates to share with you today post-registration and as we get ready to start the school year as well. Before we begin those updates, I'd ask you to please join with me as we pray for Mary Seat of Wisdom, our school patroness, to intercede on our behalf. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Under your patronage, dear Mother, and calling on the mystery of your Immaculate Conception, we desire to pursue our studies and our literary labors. We hereby solemnly declare that we are giving ourselves to these studies chiefly to the following end, that we may better contribute to the glory of God and to the promotion of your veneration among all people. We ask you, therefore, most loving Mother, who are the seed of wisdom, to bless our labors in your loving kindness. Moreover, we promise with true affection and a willing spirit, and it is right that we should do, to ascribe all the good that shall come to us herefrom, holy to your intercession for us in God's holy presence. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First off, I want to thank everybody who came for registration yesterday. It was great to see returning students, uh, and as well as our new students and families and returning families as well. If you were not able to make registration yesterday, please be sure you complete the e-registration process. Contact the office to make uh, a time arrangement to come turn in your forms with your tuition agreements as well. And those can be done during business hours, usually from about 8 to 3, Mondays through Fridays. Also, if you have not yet completed the e-registration process and did your other stuff yesterday, we need that to be completed by August 23rd. Uh, to do that, please log into your PowerSchool account on the left-hand side. There's a button there that says Forms. Click on that Forms button, and then you'll go to the right side of the page, and you'll see two sections we need you to complete. The first that says Required Forms, and then there's items underneath there. As you click on those, um, they'll automatically go from one form to the next as you finish those. There's also a set of, of additional forms that are school-specific ones that are on the section of that page below the required ones. When you do the required ones, it does not automatically take you to those school-specific section. So be sure that you do all of them. When I did registration um, to pilot it for us, I forgot to do the school-specific ones and Gwen caught me on it. So I needed to re make sure I went back in and did those. So be sure again to do the required and the school specific ones um, to finish up that e-registration process. If you're having trouble logging in or finding information, you can contact Gwen with those questions or issues. If you missed yesterday's photo day, we are making up pictures on Friday, August 26th. They'll be taken at 7.30 a.m. If you had your pictures done yesterday, your student IDs should be here by the first day of school and you can use those for school lunch. If you are a returning student and missed makeup day, uh, you can use your old photo ID in order to go through the lunch line. Uh, students that don't have theirs, and are, if you're a new student and you missed, it will get you your, your current year IDs around Labor Day once we have that makeup day done. Also, uniform fleeces and polos are available for orders uh, ordering online through the Booster Club through Sunday, August 7th, 11.59, so this coming Sunday. There are two separate links for fleece and polos. Uh, the fleeces are the ones that are, re are uniform approved and the only uh, outerwear that over a polo that can be worn. So that was, everybody would need to order one or use one from, a from our previous orders that we've had. Um, if you don't have one, just a reminder, that's, that's, that, that's the uh, item that we allow to be worn, not hooded sweatshirts or other items. And then polos, you can order the ones that are listed here or, or any polos that, that meet the dress code requirements are allowed as well. Also, we have a small number of Adidas fleece from previous years that are available in the school office. They're in a variety of different sizes. There's a limited quantity of these. They're available for $50 each while supplies last. And if you'd like to get those, just stop in the office and you can see what's available. Want to make you aware of some staffing updates as well. You might have seen that we have a position posting for our counselor position. Uh, we learned in late July that Mrs. Martin's husband Who's a Lutheran, who is a Lutheran pastor in Dubuque, was contacted by his bishop and asked to take on a new assignment in California as soon as possible. So she and her family are on the road currently out to California to their new assignment. Um, they're moving to the San Francisco area. So as a result of that, she's unable to be with us for the upcoming school year. And we wish Mrs. Martin and her family the best and pray for them in this time of transition for them as well. So we are, as I mentioned, we're in the process of hiring a new school counselor, um, conducting interviews and accepting applications. If you know of anyone who'd be interested in our position, uh, please send them the information or send them my way and be happy to chat with them. So if there's anything from the counselor's office you need in the meantime, please contact Mr. Leak or I and we will do our best to get you what you need. 
We also have a long-term sub to work with Mrs. Kleesner. Mrs. Kleesner will be with us four days a week. On the day that Mrs. Kleesner is not here, uh, Ruth Deitmeyer will be joining us. Ruth's a retired teacher um, who is from the area and lives in the Spires of Faith Cluster. And we welcome her and thank her for taking on this role with us this year. A lot of students came in yesterday during registration to work on schedule changes. So we've processed as many of those as we can so far. Um, we will do schedule changes up through the fifth day of class. So that's August 26th. Um, but I also want to make students aware that if you're you might have some additional changes made to your schedule um, that you haven't requested. And if those things occur, it's because we're trying to balance student numbers in classes. So we look at um, sections and try to get them as equal as possible. Um, and what we do with those is we look at student schedules individually and look for students whose schedules allow us to be able to make those adjustments. There are some instances with course requests that a student's schedule can't change. And there are sometimes that the computer makes a schedule and we can manually go in and make some adjustments to make those balances happen. So we will provide updated schedules to everybody the first day of class when you come in. So just be aware that there is the potential that you might have, for example, strength and conditioning eighth period on your schedule now, and it might change to, to second or third or fifth hour. Or you might have a biology class current listed at seventh period that could change to second period or something similar to that. So just be aware if those things are happening, it's for those reasons um, that it would happen. Um, Again, if you still need schedule changes, you can contact me or Mr. Leak to do those as well. Um, and we'll be happy to work with you and see what we can do for you. I want to talk a little bit this morning about dual credit classes and some changes and updates to those as well. So I'm going to go through the three, uh, the different options that are available. We have two options through NICC. Um, and those are classes here that we offer in person as well as PIC classes as well, which are placement and college credit. So we're pleased to announce this year that our in-person classes that we offer with an instructor here in the building will not have a tuition charge this year due to some changes that we've been able to make with NICC and some things that they've been able to work out. So those classes we used to charge $150 tuition rate for. And so those, again, this year do not have that rate. And the classes that are included in those lists are Composition 1 and 2, Public Speaking, Intro to Psychology, Macroeconomics, Animal Science, and then our new engineering program as well. We're hopeful that this is a long-term piece. We know that this is in place, or at least this year, and it might be a year-to-year -year situation where this happens. So um, we're grateful that that's an opportunity for our families to be able to have. We also offer classes through the PIC program, which is placement and college credit. Uh, those are where students can take a class through NICC. Most of the time they're online. Um, and it could be something that we don't offer within our curriculum. So for example, we have students that take classes such as intro to sociology. Um, we've had students take classes like workplace communication skills. Those courses have a 60% tuition reduction rate. So they charge $333 for those courses instead of the full tuition amount. Um, those classes do have to be approved in advance and registered through us here at school so that Credit at Beckman Catholic and NICC is granted. If a student's interested in those, they need to contact us for more information so they can talk to Mr. Leak or I and we'll have to be happy to work with them. Uh, there is a change that the board made though is that students that are in those classes will be required to be here physically in the building at least two days a week to work on those to make sure that they are successfully completing those courses. We also have some classes that are available through Mount Mercy University this year through their Mustang U program. They have a tuition rate of $250. This fall, those classes would include intro st st statistics, which meets first hour, and religions of the world, uh, which will meet during the day in person with Mr. Digman. And then moral theology is also available as an, an add-on to Theology 12 um, with some additional items that can be done with that course. The intro to sociology course and another section of religions of the world will be offered in the spring semester. And if there are students interested in these courses, they can check with me for additional details. So again, a reminder about school lunch this year that we are reverting back to the traditional program, which means that it's a paid program. In order to qualify for free or reduced lunch rates, the application for free and reduced lunch has to be completed. And we need everybody to complete that even if you've done it in the past. If you have questions regarding that application or the forms or need some additional information, you can contact Emily Snyder, who's our food service director. Also yesterday, our development office was in the hallway. Um, through some of the places that you were with the registration handing out bench warmer tickets. So if you weren't here yesterday, please make arrangements to get those picked up. 
We have a packet for each family. We ask that those families, uh, each of our families either purchase those tickets or sell them to others. This is one of our largest fundraisers we have each year. Uh, tickets are $30 each. There's $18,000 available in prizes or the series of the raffle. So if you need additional tickets, we always will be happy to get you those as well. And um, we, again, thanks for your help with this fundraiser. We're also still looking for host families uh, for foreign exchange students. We have one student who's a returning student who doesn't have a home, and we have about three or four additional students who would like to come if we can find the placement for them. A reminder that as a school, we provide uh, the, ho the host family with a $1,500 tuition credit for hosting that can be applied to your student's tuition, or if you don't have students, you can apply that to a family's tuition balance as well. Additionally, the sponsor agencies that we work with have a stipend that's paid to family for the extra expenses you incur for hosting a foreign exchange student. If you're interested in that, you can contact the office with additional questions and we'll get you in touch with one of our placement agencies. The student government's hosting a can drive this Saturday in the Beckman Catholic parking lot. Uh, we'll be taking hand, cans and plastic bottles only. So if you have glass bottles, please do not bring those, just cans and plastic bottles for this drive. You can come into the parking lot Saturday morning, drop those off and students will be here to pick them up. We thank you for helping them with this fundraiser that they do each year. Wanna go over a couple handbook reminders as well. So you can take a look at the handbook. It's on the school's website. The link is here. Otherwise, if you go under the about tab, the handbook link then comes up there. I just wanna go over a couple things so that everyone's aware of it. Um, the big thing always is to look at student dress section to know what's allowed for dress during the school day. So boys are able to wear khaki or black shorts when it's hot. Girls can wear the uniform skirt that's available in plaid or khaki or solid color khaki or black capris that are uh, below the knee. A reminder that leggings, jeggings, yoga pants or skin tight pants are not allowed per the dress code. Also that jackets, coats, hooded sweatshirts are not allowed during the school day. Again, that's why we talked about that uniform fleece. That's the item that can be worn over the, the polo shirts during the school day. Reminder to boys that they need to be clean shaven as well. Water bottles, last year we talked about having clear ones. The school board met and so did our administrative team and approved that we're looking for a transparent bottle. So that just means that it needs to be able, need to, be able to see the liquid that's in it. Um, it does not have to be clear. It just needs to be transparent. And a reminder that book bags or backpacks are to be left in the locker once arriving for the day um, when they are here and not to be stored in the hallway, but again, in the student's locker. So be sure to take a look at the handbook if you have other questions, but those are just some reminders of some common things that we, we usually address and talk about. Next week is our two baseball games out at the Field of Dreams Complex for the Beyond the Game piece as well. We'll be here in town. Um, the Beyond the Game events are going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here in town. Um, we are still looking in the, as a community for some folks to volunteer for some slots. Students could use this to fulfill some service hour opportunities as help with the kids zone is needed. The link is here. We'll put it in the email as well for some available shifts. Mainly those ones uh, for the kids zone are on Thursday and Friday where we were the community and we could use some extra help. Um, so a reminder that we have all those visitors coming as well next week. On Wednesday, the Budweiser, Budweiser Clydesdales will be up at the Fairway store. And so we've been asked to have our parking lot available as an overflow area that day in case there's people coming to see them. So if you're coming to school next Wednesday for school related items, we ask you to park on the south end of the lot closer to the football field and to leave the north end of the lot for folks that might be going up to Fairway uh, to view the horses. So we appreciate that as well. Lots of people will be coming two days this time, especially Tuesday, Thursday, plus we'll have folks in town on Friday as well. So again, as always, please be welcoming to our visitors, make them feel um, welcome here in the Dyersville area. It's a great opportunity for us, again, to show what a great place this is to live, to live, work, and play, um, as they say. So again, thanks for all your help. And if, again, if you're interested in volunteering um, with the Beyond the Game events, please see that link that's going to be in the email. Uh, also, we want to congratulate Shirley Oberding. She was uh, randomly drawn on Saturday morning last week uh, for our MLB raffle and is the winner of our two tickets and parking pass. So congratulations to her and thanks to everybody who either purchased tickets or helped to promote the fun this fundraiser. So this was a great opportunity for us. We also thank Major League Baseball who generously gave us that ticket package. Had some questions about homecoming. So just want to make sure everybody is aware of what the dates are. 
So the homecoming parade, the Hall of Fame ceremony, and the football game are scheduled for Friday, September 23rd. It's uh, We're playing Postville, and it'll be a single game that night, so game time should be at 7 o'clock. Homecoming dance will be on Saturday night, September 24th. And then on the greenhouse, we want to let folks know that they poured concrete yesterday. Uh, so if you were here in the morning, you might have saw on the concrete trucks so of the pumper truck out there. Um, so they've got that smoothed out, ready to go. So we're waiting for that to dry and cure. And once that's ready to go, we can continue moving on the next part of that project. Wrap up, wrapping up today with some good news, we want to congratulate students for all conference honors and some all district honors for softball and baseball season. So for softball, uh, Lauren Osterhaus and Mia Myers received WAMAC recognition. So congratulations to them. Uh, from the WAMAC conference, all conference teams for baseball, we had first team honors for Owen Hunegarth and Luke Schiltz. Luke was a unanimous selection. Second team honors went to Eli Kleesner, Nate Offerman, Nick Schmidt, and Luke Sigworth. And then WAMAC recognition was received by Logan Burchard and Lane Kramer. And then on the all district team honors on the first team were Luke Sigworth, Owen Hunegarth, and Luke Schiltz. And on second team, Nick Schmidt. We also want to congratulate Owen Hunegarth, who was named to the State Baseball All-Star Small School East team that played last weekend as well. So congratulations to all those folks and to the baseball team on a great season as well. That's the update for today. We thank you for paying attention. I know this one was a little bit long. Um, we'll try again to do these about once a week during the school year, either through a video like this or just an email as well as we have stuff come up. Sometimes we have these more often as well. If you have any questions or needs, in the meantime, as we get ready to start up the school year on August 23rd, please contact us. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.